Let's look at sea level. We hear a lot about rising sea levels. What would drive sea level isn't sea ice melting, it would be land ice melting into the oceans. We've already seen that Greenland isn't losing ice appreciably, Antarctica is gaining ice, and the rest of the glaciers are losing and gaining ice at different rates. Is there any impact of CO2 on sea level? Not surprisingly, sea level has been rising steadily since 20,000 years ago when New York City was buried under a kilometer of ice. Sea level has gone up 130 meters, more than 400 feet. About 7,000 years ago, when the North Pole was ice-free in summer, sea level was probably higher than it is today. Sea level changes, but gradually. To see that, let's look at some data from tide gauges around the world. Now, New York City has been keeping track of sea level since 1855, with a timeout for the Civil War. The trend is linear. Sea level at this location has risen about 28 centimeters, or 11 inches, in the past 100 years. There's no curve upward in the last 50 years, as most news reports would have us believe. We see the same exact pattern we would see from gradual, consistent warming beginning in the early 1800s. Virginia Key, a tide gauge in Miami, has seen 28 centimeters or 11 inches in the past 100 years. Now we know that the land is sinking there at least 20 centimeters per century, mostly due to groundwater pumping, leaving around 8 centimeters of actual sea level rise over the last century, which photos of Miami Beach confirm. It's only a couple of inches. San Diego, 22 centimeters or 9 inches in 100 years. Honolulu, 15 centimeters or 16 inches in the past 100 years. Again, the trend is linear. Fremantle, Australia, 17 centimeters or 7 inches in 100 years. No acceleration. This station near Tokyo reports 36 centimeters or 16 inches of sea level rise in 100 years. What's going on? Most of Tokyo dropped 10 meters in the first half of the 20th century as a result of groundwater pumping. They had to stop pumping in 1970 to prevent the land from sinking further. Whoa, Stockholm, Sweden. Sea level has dropped 37 centimeters in 100 years. What's going on? Because the land in Stockholm and its surrounding area is rising as a result of natural plate tectonics. Hmm. Here's Ketchikan, Alaska, where there's been no change in sea level in the past hundred years. Now we know that sea level is going up around the world. So in Ketchikan, the land is actually rising at the same rate as the sea, around 16 centimeters per century. Juneau, Alaska is rising faster than Ketchikan is. All of Alaska is rising. Galveston, Texas is sinking dramatically, as is most of the Gulf Coast. Around the world, not only are tectonic plates sliding on top of and below each other, causing land to rise and sink, but most cities are drawing groundwater. In many coastal cities, the land is sinking. We need to take ground movement into account when talking about sea level. Here's Boston, which is similar to New York. According to a study published in Geophysical Research Letters, the East Coast from New York to Boston is sinking about one and a half millimeters per year, or 15 centimeters per century. Now that gives an actual sea level rise of 15 to 20 centimeters, or six to eight inches per century. In my view, this is the most likely true rate of sea level rise for the past 200 years, and UN data actually confirms it. Uh, but Judith Curry knows more than I do, and she estimates a true rise of 3 millimeters per year, which would give us 30 centimeters, one foot, over the next century, regardless of how much CO2 goes into the upper atmosphere. So we can establish a 95% confidence interval of between 6 and 12 inches over the next 100 years. Not a single tide gauge in the world shows any acceleration after 1960 when CO2 started to increase. There's another important statistic. Graphic images of future sea level rise sells media, helps nonprofits raise money, 
and helps governments have more influence and raise their budgets. Everyone can justify raising and spending more money and flying in their private jets to important meetings when the end is just 10 years away, as it always seems to be. Do you think publications exaggerate to increase sales? If they do that for climate, could they do that for any other areas? Hmm. Speaking of money, let's talk about polar bears.